Welcome, my name is Roger Atkins, and this is Auto Future Now. An afternoon of fantastic intrigue, of conversation, of presentation, drawings even. And we're going to go on a journey of where the automotive industry is, but probably much more importantly, where the auto industry needs to go and is in process of doing so. Do you think that bi-directional charging and the opportunity of energy to becoming a re recurring revenue proposition is a significant part of the future of the electric auto industry? Uh, my answer is like 30 meters away. We are the first one with the Renault 5 to put a V2G charger in Europe, okay? So uh, it's very simple, and uh, because we saw the opportunity, although it's a very ch challenging project from a cost point of view because it's a small car, we decided to put the money into the thing because we see the benefit of the consumer. You have to understand that charging an electric car means basically doubling the electricity bill. So a car driven by for 15, 20 kilo, thousand kilometers a year will consume the same electricity than a family a household with four members. Okay, so it's good business for energy uh, <laughs> sector. And uh, we know that the V2G with the intelligent uh, charger, uh, we can actually cut by 50% that kind of bill. That means, that means that you might run a Renault 5 or another car that has a V2G basically for free. If the V2G th system works and the, if the car is able to re-inject energy at the right time into the thing. And that's a beautiful thing for the consumer. So I am also a kind of a fan of, you know, living, as Silvio was saying, open, you know, openness on technology, uh, what we call it technically, respecting the <coughs> technological neutrality principle, etc. But electric cars, have a lot of benefit. One of them you mentioned before, which is bad for us because we make less money in after sales or with electric cars, but yeah. it's good for the customers because they will not have to repair and pay a lot you know, in the garage during the life cycle. The other thing is this one. So we will have to learn as an OEM to actually uh, not only make money at the, at the beginning where we invoice the customer, but then try to make money throughout the life cycle, exactly. even beyond one ownership cycle of the car, until the car is recycled. And that's a different, let's say, uh, like completely different business model that we have to learn how to operate. But I can guarantee you that, at least at Renault, we got the point very, very clearly. Yeah, so, well, you, <laughs> it, you, you, I know you've had a declared ambition for some time, Peter, to get to five miles a kilowatt hour. Forgive me for not translating that to kilometers. That's correct. Kilometers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Are you there yet? Are you are you are you close to that? Well, Lucida, in, and this is with um, with the the EPA standard, which is the more stringent US standard. This is very important. This is what's going to have a profound impact on saving the planet because not all EVs are born equal. Uh, there's this perception that all EVs are good because there's no exhaust emissions, all gasoline is bad, and that's not true. There's a range, there's a hierarchy of EVs, and some are sort of electron guzzling EVs, and they're not very good in that respect in terms of the energy they consume. And because of that, you need a bigger battery pack. So it's really important we go for as many miles as possible with as small a battery as possible. That's what Lucid's all about, that's, what, that's my mission in life. Sure. We get to 4.74 with a pure rear-wheel drive, that's miles per, per kilowatt hour. But the, 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 the standard's actually been made more stringent, and that's why we're seeing all the ranges of the cars getting less in the US. Not because anyone's been cheating, but because the EPA has changed its chest test procedure, made it more stringent, so it's more difficult to get the range. So we're, we're at 474 now with a, a large luxury car like Air. We think we could get to five in a year or two. The real vision is to get six miles per kilowatt hour. That's, that's approximately 10 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And I really think that is the holy grail that we should all be shooting for. Yeah, and, and volumes are making the difference because you can absorb the investments. So I think that um, if we want to balance, back to your previous question, uh, between the different parts of the world, we've got to equalize first the level of investments that are going to be done. 
Right. I would imagine that there will be more collaboration on sharing platforms. <clears throat> And then it is where the difference comes into play is certainly with the elements of design. And I'm not saying this because I am the chief executive of Pininfarina. It's good I'm that saying, you are. You know, but I'm saying this because I do think that uh, in the end you can make a major difference <laughs> between the vehicles, although this, the underneath is the same, right? Uh, because you specialize, you offer <laughs> different things and you, you do, let's say, offer what the market wants uh, maintaining the distinction, because in the end, uh, the brand is this. I think um, the major thing that uh, is going to be affecting the industry in these days is the way in which the brand equity that has been built over 100 and plus years because of the of, of ICE or in, in technical vessel engines is going to be translated into electric engines, where software is making the difference. How can you convert that equity? I mean, you know.